um, we did find that there was really not a lot out there about um, comorbidity and Aboriginal health when, when we discovered this finding, which I'll touch on a little bit. Um, that kind of led into my fellowship. So um, we obviously have statistics about depression and separately alcohol misuse amongst Aboriginal people, but less so about the kind of interaction of these conditions. So um, yeah, quite an interesting finding there. Yeah, we went on to kind of look at detection um, from general practitioners and we found that they only detected about um, one in five individuals that had this co-occurring condition. Um, some people were detected for either depression or alcohol misuse, but um, about four in 10 people were detected that had both conditions were detected as having none. So um, potentially quite a vulnerable group there that were um, quite under like under detected. Moving into that outpatient treatment setting, um, there was, we, so this is kind of a more specialised setting where obviously people are going to see treatment for um, more kind of severe alcohol use and um, substance use. And we found that um, in this group of a group of 200 people, uh, about 55% screened positive for depression. So like one to two people coming through there, kind of experiencing that elevated level of depression. Um, and that clinicians, they performed a bit better in this setting. They were able to detect about 73% of positive cases, um, but still, you know, a quarter of people going going on um, detected there. One other interesting thing uh, was that our clinicians actually was less experienced clinicians that were more accurate in detecting mental health in their patients compared to their more experienced counterparts, uh, which is interesting because it might mean that the field is kind of getting a bit of traction and maybe starting to come through in their education.